My name is Kristen. I'm a CTO in TriFork, and we're just about to launch uh, the GoTo conference this year with the Dart keynote. It's going to be really interesting to see what it's, what it's like. So I'll run up there, and right after the keynote, I'll come back and do a brief uh, overview of what was in the keynote. Unfortunately, we couldn't videotape it. Um, so we'll get some video out there for you soon. See you. Now we're just over with um, the Dart intro keynote here at GoTo conference, and uh, I'm down at my office. I thought I'd just do uh, a quick recap uh, for you about uh, what was in the keynote, what's in Dart, and kind of general impressions. So personally, I'm uh, I'm really excited. I think this is uh, really something that's gonna gonna be make a big difference. Um, and you know, there's been lots of discussion before the launch about what is Dart and is it going to be the next JavaScript? Where, where, what is it going to um, replace? What is it going to displace? Um, and uh, I think, you know, from my point of view, this is pretty much everything I hoped for. It's very early in the project, uh, so there's still plenty of room to, uh, to change it, to, uh, to improve it, uh, and they're very open about um, Taking um, taking contributions from people, both in terms of feature requests and code, etc. So that's going to be really exciting the next couple of months to see how this unfolds. Um, so what I brought with me here today is actually um, the slide set that they used. I have it over here um, <coughs> uh, for the morning keynote, and I thought I'd just like do a do a quick rundown of uh, some of the major things in here. So first of all, you know, Dart is a new programming language. It's a new set of tools and it's an open source project. And it's all that is out there now. You can go download the tools, you can go try try it, and there's a there's a complete IDE, there's compilers, there's there's a VM. It's all available for download at codegoogle.com. Uh, but also this very explicit warning, this is only a technology preview. Um, that this project is really there uh, so that you know they can make sure they get this right. Uh, they're not intending what they have today to be the final thing. And definitely I can already see many things that can, uh, you know, that needs kind of resolution, that needs not fixing, but that needs um, uh, to be implemented and, uh, and done. So, the to guys behind this, I, d I did a speaker introduction and then uh, that was kind of unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> but these uh, two guys, Gilad and Lars, have been you know, working in this space for like 25 years. And they worked together on a, on a system called StrongTalk um, like 15 years ago or something like that, uh, when they broke out of SunLabs. Uh, and they worked together on JVMs for a long time and now they're working together on Dart. In between, Lars Bach, Lars Bach worked on Beta, Self, OOVM, and V8 recently. Gilad has been busy doing Java language spec for a number of years, and Newspeak. So, this was the agenda they had. You know, they're talking about motivation, why are we doing this, what's the language, what do the code samples look like. Unfortunately, I don't have all the code samples here because they switched to an editor and I don't have that available here. Maybe uh, Carl can come up and, uh, and show some of that later. They had some demos, uh, they had it running on an iPad, really cool, really, uh, really cool demo, and they introduced the open source project. So, they're talking about what works well uh, on uh, the web today. And <coughs> the things that work well with the web technology we have today is developing small things. It's really nice platform independence that you have JavaScript and HTML, HTML5. You don't need to install things. It's really easy to do incremental development. Uh, and it's available everywhere. It's really ubiquitous, the uh, web browser experience. So that's all the good parts. Now, the bad parts goes uh, in their argumentation, you know, it's really difficult to be, do big projects if you do 
if you have a large code base, then doing that with JavaScript and HTML5 is really tricky. So what's hard is hard to find program structure because you don't really have types. You don't have tools to help you because there's no static types and there's no really good support for libraries. There's no good module structure. Uh, the tools can't really help you. You end up editing your JavaScript uh, system in like text edit, basically. Um, so all this stuff where you go into large scale development is, is a serious lack in, in current state of the art. And so they're saying that Dart really fills a vacuum, something where there's not tools right now, something um, which is in between all the other things. And I think that's right because we've, this vacuum has been created by basically t having 10 years with no significant language uh, innovation. We have 10 or 15 years, you know, the, the major programming platforms that we're on, which is JavaScript, C Sharp, Java, were pretty much set in stone between 10 and 15 years ago. And there's been a lot of, um, of different systems, uh, Different, different problems that we're starting to see that wasn't, weren't, aren't really covered by the technology which is like 15 years ago. So the most interesting thing here which they didn't really explain too much about is say we have a fragmented mobile platform. So what they mean by that is you know we have Java on Android, we have uh, Objective-C on iOS, we have JavaScript based systems and stuff like WebOS uh, there's a range of different ways that you program applications for mobile devices. And, you know, it's kind of hidden in the middle of this presentation, but I think this is the kind of the key to where they're really going to attack. It's not just another JavaScript. This is a way of defragmentizing, if so to speak, assembling one programming platform for all the different um, uh, app platforms. So if they succeed in that, you know, then they're like really going up against of uh, changing the, the world of Android developers and iOS developers uh, specifically. Um, so they're saying uh, a year ago uh, they did a little uh, toy project called Spot. Uh, that was with Casper, Casper Lund. Um, and uh, they tried to do a small language which was like kind of like JavaScript but with types. And they just spent a few months uh, playing with this and then decided to go ahead and do it. So, so Casper and Lars are really the two people who, who drove this from the beginning. Um, so Dart, getting down to what Dart really is, it's a, it's a simple object-oriented programming language. So everybody who's programmed in Java and C Sharp or Ruby or, you know, you name it, will immediately recognize this language as very straightforward. Um, has class-based single inheritance, so that's one place where it diverts from like JavaScript, which has this other notion of prototypes uh, and delegation. It has optional static types, which is one of the things they brought forward from the Strong Chalk project. Uh, it's also how Objective-C uh, has typing, essentially. Um, it has real lexical scoping, and this is a punt on, on JavaScript because JavaScript has some, some strange issues in terms of lexical scoping, uh, where there also you know, other languages like Ruby have had issues with lexical scoping, getting lexical scoping wrong. Um, JavaScript has this, this terrible construct, I believe it's called with something, right, where you can ins inject uh, and names into your lexical scope, which really breaks performance badly. And then they said single-threaded, and I was like, Ooh! oh no, this is single-threaded. How, how can they rule the world with a new single-threaded programming language? But at the core, the core model is single-threaded. And familiar syntax, which means it's like, it's a mix between JavaScript-ish and a little scala syntax, maybe you would say, because it has like nice inline anonymous functions using an arrow syntax. Um, one of the, perhaps one of the most different things is a, is a type checker. So <coughs> it's a different type checker in, in the sense that the type checker does not get in the way of you running the program. In fact, the type checker does not change the semantics at all. You can have a program 
full of all the wrong types. And if the program at its core is, is correct, then it will continue to run. So the types do not get in the way. Um, so instead of having uh, programmer expressiveness being limited by what the, what the type system can express, you know, it, this, this turns it completely on the upside down, saying types are there to help you. You know, the programmer probably knows what the program should do. Uh, and if you can get help by adding help from the compiler and tools by adding type annotations, that's just good. So <laughs> they put this quote in, in Dart, you're innocent until proven guilty. So basically, uh, that means, you know, the, the compiler, the runtime will just let your program run even if the types are, are, uh, are incorrect in some way. And that's also, um, you can see that in that it only issues warnings. There's no type errors in Dart. There's only type warnings. Okay. The types in Dart are reified, right? Uh, and that means that you can um, actually test if something is of a certain type. So it, this is like, like an instance of check. You can use the instance of check at runtime to check is this uh, uh, of, of a certain kind. It's called is in Dart. Uh, and this also works with generics. So uh, if you've been in Java space, you might be have been annoyed that, uh, about the fact that the runtime model doesn't carry information about uh, generics and param parameterized classes. Well, in Dart, they do. So you can actually say instance of a list of string, for instance. And it'll know if it was instantiated as a list of string. Okay. Uh, so this slide was about, yeah, there's a certain runtime mode uh, that you can enable during development, which will actually at runtime check these types, check all the types. So, so type declarations become annotations, or be become assertions. Uh, whereas in normal production, you probably wouldn't enable that. Um, So this is more details about optional types that uh, I just probably already said. Then, whoo -hoo, I was very happy when, they, when, they, when we came to this slide because, you know, remember how I before said that uh, Dart is single-threaded? And I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no, how can you make a modern language single-threaded? <coughs> but Dart has isolates. Isolates is uh, kind of like, it's inspired by Erlang, it's like Erlang processes. So Dart has this notion of running these lightweight processes, and you can run many of them within the same Dart VM, and they communicate by message passing. Um, so each of these is, is completely isolated. Semantically, they have a complete separate, right now at least, I ask, uh, ask Gilad a bit more about the semantics. Right now, it semantically has a copy of all the code. That's the semantics of it. Um, and you use message passing to, to talk between them. When you create one of these, you get a port that you can use to talk to it. Um, and of course, isolate support concurrent uh, execution. So I think this is just the right model for doing concurrency programming uh, in a modern world. <coughs> so Dart is not done. Uh, there's still a bunch of things that they haven't uh, implemented or haven't decided what to do. I mean, there's no, no reflection support, but that's very likely going to be uh, based on mirrors. Uh, Gilad told me that offline. Uh, there is some um, various minor language things, like do you have variable number of arguments? Do they support enums? That hasn't been decided, implemented. They're talking about do you want Maybe you want pattern matching, uh, as in Erlang, because when you send messages between isolates, you need to be able to decipher these messages and figure out how to, how to interpret them. Um, and what's the... Um, oops. Connection to Chrome, it's not in Chrome yet. Uh, eventually, when it stabilizes, this will, of course, be a VM that's kind of part of the Chrome experience. Right now, it's something separate you have to download because this is a technology preview. So, um, the way you, you can uh, execute Dart is, have Dart source, you can run that on a Dart VM. 
Or you can have Dart source, run it through the Dart C compiler, and run it in JavaScript. So that's what they were demoing when they were demoing this running on an iPad. They had an application that they compiled to JavaScript and were running on an iPad. One of the cool new things is you can also take the Dart source and then kind of pre-compile it, you could say, into what they call a snapshot. And that, run that on a Dart VM. And a snapshot is like doing all the things up to the point where it runs the first line of main. So it can initialize data structures, get code ready uh, to run. And then, so it basically this tool that takes a snapshot is a Dart VM that runs up to the point just before the entry point of your code and then it freezes that VM state, dumps it uh, and you can load that up very very fast, 10 times faster than if you had to parse all the code uh, like you have to do in JavaScript today. So this is like starting from a snapshot lets you do very quick uh, startup which is one of the things, one of the issues they've been, they've been struggling uh, with in, uh, in JavaScript. And one of the things I know they worked very hard on in V8 is <coughs> being able to get startup uh, be as quick as possible. So that's very cool new stuff. Performance, there's some numbers, you can check them out probably. You see the numbers here are almost all below 100, meaning that this is still slower than hand-optimized JavaScript for a number of different uh, examples. So it's still not, this is, they're not like blowing us away today and saying this language is 10 times faster than JavaScript and 10 times faster than Java. But they're still in, it's kind of in a comparable range and this is very early and Lars said, you know, before we call this a production release, I'm, I guarantee you, I don't know if he said guarantee, but he said, I, he said this would all be m faster than uh, JavaScript. That's what we'll see. A um, little bit about snapshotting. Uh, they had some examples they showed. Then they showed an editor. They had a full IDE they showed. So in between these slides, they flipped uh, to the live code editing. Uh, they had a, have a full uh, kind of Eclipse-based uh, editor with syntax highlighting and, uh, and aid in, uh, as for if you're accessing stuff in a library which has types on its, uh, on its API, you get, um, you get like uh, drop down boxes of what methods can be called on this object, etc. Just like you're used to in your classical ID. And that's you know, exactly the set of features that, that, that they're aiming for with the type system. The type system is there to help the programmer and to help the tools. It's not there to make the language run faster or to be more secure in a sense. That's, that's, if you use the type system for those things, then it kind of tends to get in the way of expressing what you really want. So this is a really, really, really interesting kind of mix between these. Um, and they opened all these um, websites. There's dartlang.org where you can go read more about the code. Uh, there's dartgooglecode.com where you can go download the code and contribute to the open source project. So I think uh, they have all these things that they talked about today are available there. And that's just pretty darn cool. So. You should go check it out. I think this is really, uh, I think this is really a game changer. It's going to be really interesting to see how this unfolds. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be done still, and lots of things that we need to uh, uh, help them. They need to uh, finish this project, uh, but this is really, really a good start. I think. I think it's going to create a lot of buzz, a lot of uh, interesting things going on. So 